Guys. I feel like we just saw you. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting used to Vegas. <laughs> Very nice. So uh, when we did see you here last time, it, it, I don't think the fight had been announced at that point, right? Had you accepted it yet, or what was the timeline of all this? Yeah, it happened the, the Friday uh, before, so like, you know, a week before last weekend. And uh, it, it was funny. It was such kind of like a long training road. So a- after the Cowboy fight, I effectively, like, did a fight camp. And for the only reason other than I was just really enjoying the training, I was, like, riding some high momentum. And I had a lot of teammates fighting. And I was like, certainly the UFC will offer something cool soon. So I was like training. It had been like seven or eight weeks, which is like a full, too long fight camp. And I had just gone to Fortis for a little over a month to work with Ramez Brahimaj, who just did awesome in his fight. So I was like hitting my super hard sessions in Houston, driving up to Dallas, hitting like the Fortis sessions there. And I was starting to get a little burnt out. And like, sure enough, it was Ramez's fight week. I was like, all right, I'm going to take this week easy and, uh, and just wait until the next fight camp. And sure enough, that Friday... I get the offer to fight. I was so happy to take it, so all that training wasn't for nothing. And, uh, and then I knew I'd be in Vegas for, uh, for Ricky's fight, which was awesome. I got some really good work in that week, too. And, man, it was great. You know, we, we landed Sunday. You know, last Sunday, I, uh, I, I called a few of my guys. We did 10 five-minute rounds of sparring just to make sure I was feeling good. And, man, I was feeling awesome. Hit a super hard Monday and back in Vegas on Tuesday, and here we are. That's crazy. So anybody that's looking at this as you stepping on short notice, it's really not. You kind of had a camp for it. Yeah, I had a, a super camp, and I, I thought it was going to be for nothing. And, you know, I'm 31 now, feel amazing, but I don't want wasted fight camps. I don't. Like, I don't know if my body can handle that for, for too much time. So it was, like, it was perfect. So I can't complain. That's awesome. So th- that may answer then, because I was curious, the name. You know what I mean? Like, you had been – fighting some incredibly notable guys. And here, I don't mean to disrespect them, but certainly not that notable. Did you have to be talked into this, or was it just the fact that, man, I've put all this in, I don't care who it is? No, I didn't care who it was. Uh, you know, I'm especially at the point of my career with the UFC where I'm getting paid pretty well. And uh, so I really don't care who the opponent is. And uh, they actually offered, they said, you know, hey, we, we can, you can fight in December, or we got to fight in two weeks. And I was like, I do not want to wait till December. I'll happily fight in December as well. But I wanted to make the most out of this training. And, uh, and the team just has so much momentum right now. You guys saw Ricky. I mean, he trained hard. I was training hard with him. And he fought super hard and, and got a big win. So, you know, it was cool. And then I got, I got one of my guys fighting on Sunday on Fight Pass after my fight on Saturday. So I requested the earliest flight home. We're going to go up there. I'm going to corner him, do the commentary work for that show. And uh, the next weekend, Ricky's girlfriend has a fight in Oklahoma, kickboxing style. And then, like, two weeks after that, I got five of my amateurs. One of them's a black belt at my gym. Professor Joel, he's awesome. Uh, all, all fighting. Two of the guys on that card are also kickboxing champions. So we got like, what, 10 fights in six weeks. I'm excited. That's crazy. It's awesome. Like you said, you mentioned a couple of real special performances. I did want to ask, though, Ricky, did that provide something special? I mean, it's clear that you guys have a bond. He was very thankful of you. I mean, did that provide something special for you going into your own fight? I mean, yeah, I knew he would show up and, and do his thing. Man, Ricky's awesome. Uh, none of it forced either. I think that's why people like him so much. And uh, I'll tell you, I've never been on the outside perspective. I've always been the one fighting. So showing up to fight week, training, uh, even warming them up and seeing the weigh-ins and the media stuff, it just got me really comfortable with, like, the process this week. And, uh, and especially after fighting Cowboy and fighting Pettis and fighting Reese, you know, I got close to an hour's worth of octagon time within, you know, a year. And I just, I'm so comfortable. I cannot wait to step in there on Saturday. I just... I just know how the canvas feels, how the light feels, and, like, it, it's just strange. Like, when you're sparring, you're having fun, you're taking care of your friends. But in the octagon, it's like, you know, timing collisions to do damage, and I just feel so comfortable in that aspect. And I, I think that's going to play a pretty significant, you know, role in the fight come Saturday. That's awesome. Uh, as far as David goes, I mean, did you know much about him when he's offered? If not, you know, or, or, or if so, I mean, have you studied him since? What do you think about him as an opponent? Yeah, I always watch a tremendous amount of tape. I actually have not missed any of his fights live either. I don't miss welterweight fights. If there's a welterweight fighting on a UFC card, I make sure to watch it. I really don't miss many UFC fights in general. But oddly enough, I had fought in, uh, in Canada a, a few years back, and it was his debut against Danny Roberts. And my coach and I were in Canada like two days early, and we were actually able to catch that fight card. If I'm not mistaken, I think Anthony Smith fought maybe Rashad Evans, and I think Shogun maybe fought on that card. And I remember watching Zawada and Roberts, and I was like, man, that's a good fight. And, uh, and it was, and I've just watched this fight since. And, and I've said this, uh, you know, since I got the matchup. Zawada, his skill set is not reflective of his record in the UFC. You know, he's one and three. He's got two split losses, which means they could have been wins. He's got a, a loss against the Leech, who's a monster. And he's got a win over Namagomedov, which is very impressive. So he's had nothing but tough fights. And, uh, and again, I expect this to be a tough fight. 
That's awesome. Last thing for me, win here. What is the plan? I mean, are you going back on the Legends Tour and getting those big names, or, or does it matter? Is it now just, you know, dates that you need and things that fit in your schedule? What's the plan? Yeah, I'm hoping to fight, come out healthy, and then again fight in December. Uh, again, I don't really care against who, and I'm not looking overlooking Z Zavad at all. Uh, but, yeah, December would be awesome. And then, uh, and then I was telling Ricky, I was like, hey, I hope you fight early next year. He needs, I want him some time to heal. He had back-to-back-to-back three-round wars, and he's actually come out of it okay. I mean, his hands are a little busted up. But, uh, but I, I asked him, you know, if he could wait until early next year just uh, so. So I'm hoping to, to hopefully fight in December, but I also wouldn't mind quarter one next year either. Good to go. Cool. Thanks, guys.